Now, let's get to the crux of the problem. We have the problem posed, linear decomposition. But how would you actually do it? How would you determine these coefficients? It's not a linear system. Kind of it, right? We're used to decomposition being equivalent to a linear system. But here, number one, there is infinity. So that makes it a little bit difficult. Uh, number two, these are functions. We don't have a general way of doing decomposition problem, converting it to AX equals B. We would if there was a basis. But if now we're looking at the set of all functions, maybe we want to narrow it down a little bit of the set of all smooth functions or continuous functions. But it's still not a finite dimensional space. Not even a, a countable dimensional space. It's just a crazy space. It's a big question whether or not it even has a basis or what it would mean for it to have a basis. Because when we're when we have the concept of a basis, we're only considering finite linear combinations. And here we have a linear, an infinite linear combination. So the AX equals B analogy here is a little bit challenging. We can't really convert it to a system of equations so easily and then just solve it. So we need some other idea. So we need some other idea. And here is that idea. Let me show you how I would actually, let's start with A0. Why don't we start with A0? Let's ask a very, very interesting question. If f of x, if this expansion has indeed succeeded, what is the integral of f of x from minus pi to pi? Ha, huh, that's a great question. You guys tell me. So what you should do is imagine integrating this expression from minus pi to pi. And this is very much an applied class. So you don't have to worry about the fact that the integral of an infinite sum is the infinite sum of the individual integrals. So in a math analysis class, you would worry about it because that's the point of the class. Here, it's not the point of the class. Obviously, when you integrate this, it all cancels out. Same thing with cosines, because it's perfectly periodic and perfectly centered. All of these integrals would be zero. The only one that will survive is a zero. And so the answer will be two pi a zero. And so we have our formula for a zero. It's essentially the integral of the function divided by two pi. Let me write it down. Where were we? Okay. So now we actually have a nice interpretation for a zero. It kind of tells you to the it kind of tells you the degree to which this function's up. So to the degree the degree to which this the integral of this function is above zero. Does that make sense? Without a zero, everything else would be centered in the areas canceling each other's sense over the x-axis. Yes. Yeah, that's a ho oh, oh, that's a much better way of putting it. It's just the average of the function, right? It is its integral divided by the width of the domain. It's just the average, makes total sense. Why is it the average? Another perspective, because the average of all of these is zero. So with this one term, you at least get the average. Okay, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. How would we get, maybe we can use a similar idea to go after a, well, this is where A1, rather. Well, this is where you'll have to remember a little bit of trig. But let me just tell you something that will work. We'll, say, we'll see why it works. And then we'll decide whether we actually need to put in the details or not. Let's go after, just for specificity, cosine A5. Let's go after A5. What I will suggest we do, and you'll see in a moment why it works, is instead of finding this integral, I would suggest multiplying 
f of x by cosine of 5x. You will see in a moment why it makes sense. Cosine of 5x. Let's once again integrate it from minus pi to pi. Okay. And let's see what happens on the right hand side. So obviously I'm multiplying both sides by cosine 5x and then integrating from minus pi to pi. Those of you who are in my linear algebra class, what is this beginning to look like? Uh, this combination. Yeah. More generally, in a product. The inner product is naturally beginning to appear. Okay, so let's not discuss inner products. I want to keep this discussion linear algebra free for pedagogical purposes. Okay, let's imagine what happens on the right hand side. Well, first, a0 gets multiplied by cosine 5x and integrated. What is that? Zero. And then each one of these cosines gets multiplied by cosine 5x. And so the one that is cosine 5x, the fifth term becomes cosine squared of 5x. So that's interesting. That's positive everywhere because it's a square. So that will have certainly a value that we're interested in. Integral from minus pi to pi of cosine squared of 5x. What will this be? We'll answer that in just a moment. But let's think about all the other terms other than cosine of 5x. We'll have some periodic function once again because each of the functions that are part of it are periodic. Okay? And would you say that trig will substantiate this? But would you say it's pretty clear that they will be up as much as down? Yeah, yeah and they will cancel each other and it will be zero. So there is trig that shows that it's right because if you consider integral from minus pi to pi cosine 5x times cosine, <coughs> excuse me, nx dx, there is a trig identity that will turn this product into a sum of sines and cosines. And obviously each one of those signs is periodic and therefore goes to zero. And that argument won't work when this is also five because the cosine of the difference will be cosine of zero and so it survives. But for all other terms it's zero. And the exact same thing with the signs. All of them will work out in such a way it will be probably cosine of the semi-sum minus the sine of the semi-difference. That's what I think it'll be. A sum of two straightforward trigonometric functions and therefore under the integral it will once again go to zero. So let me write down equals zero. So the only surviving term on the right hand side will be proportional to a sub five and it will equal this integral. Now, what, how, how do we evaluate this integral? A little bit of calculus? That's right. You just remember that cosine of the square is 1 plus cosine of twice the angle. Whoa. <laughs> That's how I did twice the angle. Of twice the angle divided by 2. Uh, half angle formula, right? And so this will get killed by the integral and one half will survive. And one half integrated from minus pi to pi is of course pi. I saved space for it. Pi. And so we now have our formula for A5. It just says to get F, to get A5 you just have to multiply F of X by cosine 5X and integrate from minus pi to pi. And of course this will work for any n, so now we have our formula for a sub n. a sub n 
There is the formula. And this is the reason, an ugly reason, really, to keep A0 and A sub n's apart. So you will often see to avoid this, people would write the leading term as one half A0. So that these two formulas could be, it redefines A0 to be double what it is. Where you write one half A0, just to avoid these two different formulas. And that's a half measure. A full measure is to go to complex variables and not have a worry in the world and perfect beauty. Okay, and now we know exactly how to get the bn's. You would just multiply f of x by sine nx. Let's do it once again with 5. Repeat all of the same arguments. And you'll, you'll have b sub n for completeness. Let's write it down. So we were able to pick them out one by one. So b sub n, we now have our complete formulas. All right, we have solved our problem. We have found a way of discovering what the linear decomposition coefficients are. I won't compromise on that. This is a linear decomposition problem. So I can only avoid talking about linear algebra for so long. Actually, I'm thinking back to being a student myself when I first learned Fourier series from a very nice book on calculus. This was exactly the logic. And every time I would think to myself, my goodness, so lucky how this worked out. And then isn't this lucky that this drops out? And then isn't it such, such a fortuitous circumstance that this works out just right and that the formulas are so pretty? And then, of course, you realize there's that bigger structure. But sometimes it's better to go from specific to general.